Hey, we back. I'm here on Discord, and today we're talking about text formatting, the most interesting topic of all. Now, to be fair, there is a lot of places online where you can find out which text formatting on Discord exists, uh, a lot of them, but this does not stop me from being able to join the join the group now i am one of those places also hi guys anyway yeah text formatting that's a thing you probably know about it know that it exists all the rest of it um but there sure are some text formattings that people don't seem to know about um which i was made aware of earlier today in fact when someone was like hey i didn't know that text formatting existed and hence this video is now a thing congrats anyway Let's get started. So we will start with italics. You can put like two asterisks next to something and it types in italics. Um, reasonably recent update to Discord. Um, this is actually shown in your text bar. It didn't used to do this. You used to have to send the message and then discover that you've got the text formatting wrong or something. Um, but now it does actually update in here. So you can see that this one's in italics and this one's is not. Uh, I guess this probably isn't the best example because I wrote absolute gibberish. Let's copy paste this, shall I? We've got the same thing. You can see it's italics and it's not. There you go. Simple as. Um, most of you probably know about that one. And you probably also know that you can do bold by having two stars. And then you can also have bold, ital <laughs> bold italics by having three. Whoopee. Um, because these are the most common um, text formatting things on Discord. That's what most people will use if they use any. You might not have even known about those, in which case, there you go. Um, but there are some others also. Uh, one that I find a lot of people know about, but no one uses, because it's kind of useless, is underlined. You can underline stuff like that. There you go. Uh, and this stacks with all the others as well. So like I could have underlined with italics like that, underlined with bold, with two stars, etc, etc. I'm not going to go over all the combinations, you get you get the point. Um, but yeah, so there you go, underlined is a thing, you do that with two underlines. Two, well, two, what even is this? Underscore, that's the one. Yeah, two underscores. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, I do think there is a multiple ways of doing underlines, um, but I'm not 100% sure. You can also do italics with one underscore, like that but you can also do it with one asterisk so who cares um what else do we have we also have a strike through you do with these two wiggles two of them that does strike through like that uh which is which is pretty well used i suppose uh what do we also have we can ha put them in a little box uh make it makes it more readable i suppose all the, the, the it changes the font basically but the point is this font all the letters are exactly the same size i think i think that's the point of it um, it's a much more uniform font, uh, so in theory it's much more readable. Um, so there is that. Um, but if you really want to go fully out with it, you can put three of them. Um, we're going to have to actually send this one for it to show. This one doesn't show. When in the text thing, but there you go. Uh, so this will make it take up a whole line. It fully puts it in a box. It uses that same font as before, uh, where all the letters are the same size, I think. Um, and the main reason that you would use this if you're doing like uh, typing some, some code or something, if you want to type code into your Discord. So what you can do, you can actually specify a programming language. So for example, if I put PY, you see that turns green. I put that at the start of the message, that means it's going to be Python. Or I could type a different one, like I could put Java or something instead, right? You see it's grey when it doesn't recognise it, but when it turns green, that means it's recognised it as a, as a language. Is it, it would also recognise full Python written um, and then you've got green. Um, if you didn't know, shift enter lets you go on a new line on Discord. But when you have the little triple tick, this is the back tick. Um, when you've got those, you can press enter and it will go to a new line anyway. Interestingly enough, this actually means you cannot send the message um, unless you have the send message button active over here. Uh, you have to finish the back ticks and then if you press enter it will obviously send the message but at the moment if i press enter it just adds a new line the same as a shift enter normally would but anyway let's suppose i write a bit of bit of python code i don't know let, let's have like a uh we we, we can say uh, let, let's make a, a weird weird loop right i could say like i equals one you you see the colors a bit different on there uh, and then we could say like um while i is less than 10 we're going to have to add the tab in ourselves. 
i i plus equals one um and then we can have if i is more than five print hi and you see we're getting like stuff here colors and then i send that Colors. This also means you can use this feature to color your text. So with the Python here, it would only color while and if and stuff like that. But um, programming languages have comments. So if I do pi and then the comment Python, which is hashtag, you'll notice that this colors it a slightly darker color than the normal text. Now, admittedly, this is a bit useless, but we can find a different one. For example, if we grab CSS and put it in this little box, then we get red text that's kind of orangey i guess but there you go red text or we could have fix i think that that's one there we go we've now found yellow text there's a bunch of different colors that you can get uh, by using different wacky programming languages and different methods of commenting or or you know whatever uh, because they will come in various different colors. I'm not going to go over all of them now because there are actually tons. Uh, but if you do look up online, you can actually find lists of programming languages and their associated colors uh, to go with that. Anyway, we will go back to the text formatting. Um, the next one we were going to cover is the one that was mentioned in the conversation earlier, uh, which is this one, the old uh, reply format. Uh, now, if you don't know, I'll say what I said in my conversation earlier which is that this used to be the format for the old replies so now if you reply to a message it does this we, this is the inline uh, reply format uh, and basically it puts this little thing up here says uh, who it was you can click on them says what the message was you can click on it it'll take you to the message um, it's pretty nice um, also if you're applying to a message down here you can toggle on and off pinging um, so yeah, all in all, that's pretty good. I wish there was a search for replies as well. That would be really cool. Um, if you're able to search for people to replying to other people, uh, you kind of have to go off mentions, but that doesn't always work. So, oh well, more features for Discord to add. Uh, but anyway, the old replies, when you click the reply button, what it would do is put that little thing there, automatically copy paste the message and then on the next line it would ping the person and there is ready for you to type your response to it and that would be the old reply format um, of course it's updated now but we can still use this formatting uh, by putting the little you know what's this a more than sign less than sign less than sign I guess uh, in front of the message you do have to put a space um, and then every line you add from then on it will keep doing it that was kind of weird it broke out the message but yeah every line from then it will it will keep on doing it uh, so if you want to not do that you have to press backspace um, but yeah there you go this is a thing that you can use um, and because it used to be used for replies um, it's typically used now for replying to part of a message so if I wanted to reply to just this bit I could copy paste that put that in then put my reply underneath potentially ping the person as well uh, if I fancied you know whatever uh, so yeah that's that's just another formatting there um, I think it's used probably just as frequently as just putting this because at the end of the day that's kind of like a, a, a quote anyway isn't it um, that's like the green text kind of thing I guess uh, but yeah this kind of quote anyway the rest of text format is is mostly to do with like pings and stuff so of course you have pings like we've got here uh, you can also ping channels like like that um, you can also do all of these things with IDs so like if I grab the ID what I want to do is put it in this format you've got the um, the more than sign and you put the less than sign at the end the hashtag for the channel uh, and then you can also do this with users too with the brackets there that was probably a bit quick because discord was lagging but there you go you do like that and then you put the sign on the end the opposite sign um, you can see if you put the uh, slash in front of it uh, then it will show what I actually typed uh, speaking of the slash you can actually use that for everything so for example if I want to put like actual asterisks around something like that if I use the slash that will escape it and now it sends it with the asterisks if I want if I'm doing like some maths or something and I've got like a bunch of, of asterisks like that if I put one in front of 
an asterisk, it will only escape that asterisk. So I then have to go and escape the other ones and the other ones. You can see when they turn gray or not, it might be a bit hard to see, but like this one's gray because it's actually being active. This one's not. So I, I put the asterisks in one. And of course, I don't need to escape the last one because they always come in pairs. So then that would send all of the, uh, the asterisks. Um, so yeah, you can use that to escape, and then you can also use it to do stuff like this. So it's a good way, um, if you don't have uh, developer mode on, to copy the IDs of finding someone's ID. You can um, ping them uh, like this, and then uh, put the slash in front of it, and it'll tell you the ID. Um, this is also, I believe, the only way of finding an ID from an emote, unless that's been changed. Now we've just got favorites. So if I send an emote and I put a slash in front of it, that will give me the ID of the emote. Um, so this is when you, what you want to copy and paste for a bot to send the emote. If you're trying to do bot stuff, um, you can also do the same with channels, of course. Um, and then you can also do th funky things like timestamps. Uh, so like if I want to uh, make a timestamp, I would do this and put T and then I have to put the time in epoch. So let's just put a random number in there. Um, and then I'm going to use F here, which means full time. There's a bunch of little things you can put on the end here for different time formats. I'll just use F for this example. Again, this is the sort of thing you can Google if you want. Um, and then we put the other bracket on the end and we send that and it's a timestamp. In this case, the 18th of, of April, 9,415. Guess I put too many digits in that one. Um, if you want to know what number you, you put um, here, uh, you're going to need to Google Epoch Time. And potentially I'll make another video on timestamps at some point because they are actually kind of complicated um, in the sense that there's a lot of options for them and Epoch Time is something you might not have heard about. Um, but yeah, that is also a thing. And I guess in theory, in theory, you can also escape this. So if I type it out and put a slash before it, it's just going to type it out like that. There you go. I don't know why you would you would do that for this one, because you have to type it out like that anyway. But sure, why not? Um, anyway, yeah, that's that's the rest of the formatting. Um, all of that kind of stuff uh, will show up in your text box, like I said, when you type it. Unless, mind, uh, you activate in your settings, there is a option for legacy text input. Um, which I believe I mentioned in one of my recent videos. I'm not 100% sure of that. It was definitely in a pinned comment at least. Um, and that is um, pretty useful for disabling the big menu uh, when you're doing like rolls or something, which is actually not coming up for me. It's kind of flashing. There you go, brought it up. So if you're trying to do like rolls on the day and this menu's, menu keeps popping up and it's getting in your way, you hate it, you can disable that with la legacy text input, uh, but it will also display these things showing up in your text bar like this. You won't see it turn into italics. Not to say that they won't still work. They will still work, just only when you send them like it used to be. That's why it's legacy. Anyway, that I think is all the text formatting, uh, at least all the useful text formatting. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will end this video here, and who knows, maybe I'll do another video on, on e uh, epoch time and, and timestamps and stuff, because that actually is a, that's a nice idea. Good job, me. And now I'm getting pinged, so I should definitely end the video. Alright, bye!